as I mentioned previously, it's also very important to understand what the limitations are as far as being a penetration tester or ethical hacker. And some of these limitations are clearly defined for us through various laws that have been defined by the federal government. We're going to go over a couple of very important laws and some kind of general laws and get a good understanding of where we stand and where those limitations are defined for us at a national level. The first one we're going to talk about is Title 18 USC 1029. And basically this just defines telecommunications and some of the limitations of devices on telecommunication networks. This was originally built in the days of Kevin Mitnick and exploits using public phone systems. I'm going to summarize it as how it's going to relate to us in saying that the usage of counterfeit devices is definitely illegal. We should not be improperly using devices to alter data transmissions. We shouldn't have any effect on communication equipment when using that to gain access to other devices. And we're not allowed to gain access to transactions of communications. All of these are enforced by the Secret Service and generally are activated on access or manipulation or effect of over $1,000, which is a very small amount of money. A single infraction could easily amount to ten, twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars. So basically if you perform any of these actions against a network that you're not authorized to be on, and even sometimes some that you are, the Secret Service has the authority to investigate based on that. USC ten thirty kind of goes a step further for us. It says that you're not allowed to access a computer without permission, especially if you're doing so to obtain confidential information. But in order to be investigated or prosecuted under USC 1030, it has to be proven that you had either malicious intent or performed malicious activities on that system. The limitation as far as monetary value is concerned here is $5,000. USC 3121 through 3127 is called the Pen Registers and Trap and Trace. And basically this says that you can interact with anything except for the contents of communication. And what that really means is that it's saying that this particular code is put into place to say you can be aware that the communication took place, be aware of the devices and addresses associated with that communication, but you're not authorized to access the contents of that communication. Basically, let's take a basic TCP IP communication process. I can know the IP address of the sender and receiver. I can know what operating systems might be running on those. I can know any kind of information I want about when the transaction happened, the size of the transaction, what protocol was used. But once I delve into the contents of that transaction, I'm then violating USC 3121 through 3127. Now 2510 through 2522 takes it in the exact opposite direction. We're not allowed to understand the contents of the message we're not allowed to understand the external components of the message, whether that be who's communicating, when, how, and where they're communicating to. So basically, 3121 and 2510 series kind of overlap into each other and provide an overall definition of how you can and cannot interact with communication processes and contents. There are also some other statutes that have some effect, but not a significant effect on our topic, that being the Patriot Act, which was recently passed to address cyber terrorism. Also, USC 2701, which basically follows up on the various USCs saying that not only can you not affect communications in transit, but you also cannot access protected stored records. Meaning, if data is sitting on a database somewhere, it really wouldn't be covered by any of these codes because we're talking about data in transit. Whereas this is talking about any records stored anywhere that are protected or private are off limits to us. In addition, USC 1362 takes another step forward in the right direction by defining denial of service attacks. Because in denial of service attacks, we're not modifying data, we're not accessing data, and we're not affecting communications other than taking it offline. So we have some laws to back us up there with USC 1362.